I really feel like we've nailed it here with having a functional, usable and inspiring space to be able to get your training sessions done. And if there's one thing that you want to nail with your setup, it's that. It is raining hard at the moment, which kind of sucks because we are now flooding under the house. The training wall has quite a bit of a lake underneath it, which is a bit of a bummer. So it's a fingerboard day today. I've just finished up and I thought, hey, how about we just jump in and do a little bit of a tour of the fingerboard setup that I've got here at home. So I'll run you through the whole setup, the boards that we've got, how I've built it, some of the issues that I've tried to solve with this setup compared to last ones that we've had, and a few of the project hangs that I've got. Plus, I've got a question for you that I need your help with. This is the setup that I had to train for the Olympic Games in 2021. Uh, this is the awesome Woody's homeboy. We've got slopers, jugs, and then 20 mil, 18, 16, decreasing by two mil the whole way through, and then eight and seven here at the end. I really love this one for my two arm edge hangs. We've then got the classic Beastmaker quiver of the Beastmaker 1000 and the Beastmaker 2000. Around here, we've got the Prime Rib by Metolius. It's not a fantastic board, but I'll go through why I think that later. And then over this side, We've got a sneaky little setup here as well. I've got my awesome Woody's edgies and I'll show you that in a minute. I've also got the campus board set up here. We've got 32 mil rungs and then 19 mil rungs from awesome Woody's. I love this setup. It's the proper like 15 degrees and 22 centimeter spacings, whatever it's meant to be. Uh, the thing is though, we've only got one to six because we've got roof height limitations. Starts at about 1100 off the ground. So a touch under four foot. Um, and then goes up to the ceiling. I don't really have an issue with the fact that we don't have the extra three rungs at the top. It's awesome having it there and it's a really good compromise for the lack of space that we've got. So the construction of all this, it's basically anchored up into the floor joists above us and then I've got this L frame hanging off it. Uh, and as I was saying before, it's kind of double sided. So we've got this side here and here and then over here as well. Uh, it was one of the issues that I tried to solve with our last setup, which was that it didn't quite have enough real estate. I'm a bit of a glut for that wanting more fingerboard space just to hang more stuff off it. But the main issue though was the fact that it was right next to the climbing wall meant that you couldn't really have someone on the climbing wall while someone was having a fingerboard. And it was also in a bit of a thoroughfare which meant that you couldn't really store your weights and that sort of thing right next to the board. And they needed to get stored all the way over here on the other side of the room. So you had to do that like fingerboard weight waddle across the room and it just got a little bit annoying. So now that we're over here, I've got the weights in the corner and it's just super simple. It's like, bam, there it is, ready to go. One less barrier to entry. It's all just tucked neatly out the way. So in terms of the whole construction, we've got it coming down about 500 off the ceiling, which is nearly two foot. Uh, that gives us room to double stack the boards so that we can have more density in the hanger. And then this is at about 1800 or about six foot off the ground, which is a bit of a head hazard for me, but it's kind of okay. I wouldn't go any lower than this though, because by the time I'm hanging onto the bottom rungs of these boards, I need to tuck up so that my knees don't touch the ground. And if I'm adding weight, it's a little bit tricky to try and avoid them dropping out against the ground. We went with this height though, so that Amanda could pull onto the board nice and easily and not have to have like a step or something to jump up onto so that she could pull on. One less barrier to entry, basically. Let's jump over the other side now and I'll give you a bit of a sticky beak as to what all this looks like. We've got the awesome Woody's edgy set up here. I really love these things. We've got the 10 mils, the eight mils and the sixes. And these are the 16s, really, really nice to hang off. The idea with this setup was that a bit of a snatch board kind of thing. You can do that like campusy duck, 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 quite fun. But you can also just do some normal hangs on them as well, like that full crimp, that sort of thing. I'm not really sure what to put in this space. Over here, I'm thinking that we could have a good one arm farm. What's a one arm farm, you ask? Basically, a board covered in one arm hang kind of holds. Basically, just a whole bunch of kind of project hangs, which would be quite rad. So I've got these unleashed climbing holds, which are really awesome. Nice like slopey bugger here and just litter it with basically a whole bunch of potential project hangs. But the other thing I'm thinking, and it's probably the one I'm a little bit more psyched on, is this. Setting up a bit of a snatch board on the slopers. So I could have this awesome Woody sloper rail here, and then another one up there and maybe even like kick it out on, on like a 15 degree angle. I had these on the campus board and I really loved them actually. And I've been missing them. 
So this is what I'm leaning a little bit more towards. It's like duck, 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 duck. Up here, I'm not really sure what to do. I'm thinking just more like regular hangboard type situation, but let me know what you think. What would you do if this was your space? Now you may have noticed that these top rungs are set out on an extra little bit of ply. One of the issues that you can come across when you're doing like extra height things is that if it's not set out, your arm can end up draping across the whole thing here. This is why I've actually got the Beastmaker 1000 set out on this extra box. It's basically built out about 90 mil, so a touch under four inches, and it's to prevent draping across the lower board. And this is the main issue that I have with the prime rib board. Like, look at that. Your hand's just all over it, and it's a nice enough edge to grab onto, but it's gross. You'll see that most of the good hang boards have actually got that. So the beast maker here stepped out. The awesome Woody's board here stepped out. It's to give you that clearance. Now you may have noticed that these 16 mil edges were offset from these lower rungs, and there's a reason for that. And that is, this is a project hang for me. So around the side here, there's a gap between the awesome Woody's board and the beast maker. Perfect for your thumb. And then you squeeze around here with the fingers. It's about hundred mil and you just gotta, it's gonna be a great many long years before that's even gonna be close to happening. Yeah, good to strive for something though. <laughs> the 16 mil edge is another project hang for me. Be awesome to be able to one arm on that, just hang for five seconds. And then the added bonus on all of my one arm hangs is to do the one arm chin up as well. The 45 sloper on the beast maker. Oh, that'd be sick to be able to hang that and have some sort of like good control for the five seconds. I'd also love to be able to hang two times body weight on this 20 mil edge on the awesome Woody's homeboy. None of these hangs are for any particular reason other than fun. I don't feel like I need them to make my climbing any better. It's more just a fun dangled carrot, something to aim at. A bit of an antidote, I guess, to being complacent with your training. I've got one more project hang though, and it's over here on the 45. Okay, so it's this dirty thing here at the top of the 45. Awesome Woody sloper ball and just a nice big blanket grab, lay out as much friction and surface area as possible and squeeze. <clears throat> a one armor on that would be epic. So a few of the little extras that make this area just a little bit nicer. I've got my little hooks here set up for my pulley system for giving a bit of assistance. That leaves over there in the corner with the weights as well. Then we've got chalk bag over here, brushes, that sort of thing to get optimal grip. I've got my nail clippers on hand, my tape, that sort of thing. Over here I've usually got the clock set up so that we can have our timer going. And this little thing here is the little phone holder. If you need that for doing your timings, anything like that, super great to have. Sometimes I'm even watching a cheeky little climbing video to get psyched. I hope you've enjoyed the insight into our fingerboard setup under the house here. If you're interested in knowing what I wish I knew before I started training, highly recommend watching this one. If you're already up to speed with that, check this one out and I'll see you next time.